che ha dietro di spucciare lui ha detto adesso vedete che poi la intenzione lo cammerino I want the clean fight ok necessito una pelea limpia you are ready? tu stai listo? con il guante vamos bien he packs the building in Guadalajara he's packed it in Los Angeles he packs a punch Canelo Alvarez just shy of his 21st birthday trying to pack a big win against Ryan Rhodes who hopes he's packed an upset from Sheffield, England. And we're underway. Scheduled for 12. Alvarez with five first round knockouts in his career. Rhodes with seven. 17 of Rhodes, 31 have come within the first two rounds. Campaigned his whole career at 154 and 160. Unlike the Matthew Hatton fight, Alvarez's last fight, the guy who was coming up in weight, Alvarez has somebody in front of him that's very comfortable at 154. And Alvarez is starting out just like he normally does. He's very poised at the beginning of a, at the beginning of a fight. I love to see this in a young fighter because he's prepared to go the distance if he has to. Rhodes has been down five times in his career. He's been stopped twice. Jason Matthews stopped him in 1999 and Lee Blundell in 2002. He's never lost a fight at 154 pounds. You wondering about why he has 26 tattoos? You know, boxers don't have numbers. Other <laughs> athletes in other sports have uniform numbers, but Rhodes has 26 on his trunks and the tattoo on his left shoulder. His wife and his kids were all born on the 26th. So he's got his own uniform number. Small ring as we illustrated earlier, 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. Power right hand blocked by Rhodes. The good thing is, with Rose being coming down from middleweight, at least he's used to probably seeing this kind of power. But I think he's going to see a lot of power tonight. Left hand by Rose after Alvarez touched Rose to the body, sweeping left miss by Canelo. Rhodes acknowledged to us that he thinks he's a good puncher as well, but I hope he doesn't try to match Canelo punch for punch because Canelo is a very big puncher for this 154-pound division. Not a lot of explosive connects to this point. Rhodes blocks that combination, but the hometown crowd will roar in approval. That time, the right hand got him twice by Alvarez. Combination. Watch back Rhodes. Very difficult to find a young fighter at this age with the poise that Alvarez has. Rhodes likes to switch from orthodox to southpaw. He goes southpaw here. Alvarez touched him with the right hand. End of round one. Relax. Relax, Canelo. It's okay. Take some air. Breathe. I feel good. You're going to go right and then left first. And then on the left, go up. Left, left to right. So he gets set to start of round number two. Most meaningful punches in that round landed by Canelo Alvarez. I, I don't think Rhodes liked it. Uh, when he received the right hand, the overhand rights from Alvarez when he turned to the southpaw position. Hey, Roy, what's it like, uh, you know, Canelo Alvarez? I mean, 
This is his 38th fight as a pro. He's fought in his hometown, but the stakes get bigger and bigger. What about the pressure of kind of fighting in your hometown? Well, everybody's depending on you for a wonderful show. I mean, you don't want to let nobody down because everybody that you were raised up with seems to be here. They all come, especially if they think you got a challenge on your hands. So it's a very difficult thing to do. You have to hold yourself together, but he's starting out in the right manner. He's very poised right now. He's not going after a one-punch knockout, and this is what you have to, what you want to see. You don't want to see him go out there and lose focus on who he really is. Rhodes trying to work his jab. And Rhodes. Alvarez at back. Yeah, and Rhodes is not really being busy enough to try to pull off an upset here. And it, it's almost, Roy, it looks at least from ringside here, it's a tentative jab. It's almost like he's throwing it and then pulling back a little. Well, sometimes when they feel the power of the other fighter, it makes them keep those punches at home or throw them a little bit more tentatively than they normally would. Surprised that Rhodes hasn't switched up a little bit more. He likes to switch. Good combination by Alvarez. Pushes back Rhodes. Alvarez with a right hook over the top, left to the body. When Rhodes switched in that first round, Alvarez hit him with a really good overhand right, and I don't think he wants to taste that again no time soon. Well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> there he goes. Right hand to the arm by Alvarez. Uppercut to the body from Alvarez. Alvarez just missed with that left hook. Rhodes missed on the counter. In a situation like this with Rhodes, you're on the road, you know this guy's powerful. Don't you need to land something where he gets some respect from you? Yeah, you got to try to get some respect, but the bad part about it for him, see, like that right hand just made him change again. The bad part of for Rhodes is that if he comes in and opens up, it's going to allow Alvarez to land those big punches, and he doesn't want to do that. That's why he's not taking a gamble to go out and land something big. You know, they say live by the gun, die by the gun. If you open up and throw the big shot, you're also open to be hit by the big shot. Right hook, left hand combo from Alvarez. Alvarez throws the right again, the first one landed. Final seconds of round two, all Alvarez. Been in control and looks very relaxed. Tuesday night, catch the premiere of the latest edition of Real Sports featuring a profile of Tiki Barber, who's attempting an NFL comeback after a failed marriage and a disappointing broadcasting career. July 13th, it's the premiere of The Curious Case of Kurt Flood, an HBO sports documentary which examines the life and career of former Major League Baseball player Kurt Flood, whose fight for free agency forever changed professional sports. When you when you back up, don't lift your chin up. Don't start looking for your lead up until he's in range. Right? Here you see Canelo Alvarez come in with the jab, double jab, right hook to the shoulder, followed by a hook, right hook. I mean, a right hook, right. And that straight right hand landed straight down the pipe at the end. Way to put punches together for the young guy. Very nice, relaxed start for Canelo Alvarez. Um, he's not been overly aggressive, Roy, as we begin round number three. He's kind of taking what's being given to him and then capitalizing on it. This is what makes the kid so good, and this is what you usually adore about the Mexican fighters. They always seem to be so poised. They're like older guys, but they're only 20 and 21 years old. Alvarez will turn 21 on July the 18th. Rhodes trying to work that jab and just kind of get something established to catch the attention of Alvarez. He seems in a very comfortable place right now. Yeah, and Alvarez has also picked up his defense some. I noticed that last time we saw him on HBO, he was getting hit with a lot of shots, but I guess it was because he didn't fear Hatton's power. This time he's not giving up quite as many pop shots as he gave up the first time. Good combo. The left hand from Rhodes, and they kind of fell off balance. In 1997, Rhodes fought Otis Grant. He lost a close fight for a 160-pound belt. In his mind coming into this fight, he feels that 
he's now Otis Grant, going against a young guy who's really talented, but that the experience will pay dividends. Yeah, but the difference was he's not a big puncher, neither was Otis Grant. This guy is a heck of a puncher, and it's much more difficult to do the things that Otis Grant was able to do to him because he, this guy can hit you with one punch and take you out of there. You know, and he said something that was very revealing, Ryan Rhodes. He said, I feel like I'm getting this kid about 18 months before he might be too dangerous to fight. <laughs> and he was actually paying Alvarez a big compliment. Like, I'm getting him just early enough that 18 months from now, I don't think I could beat him. And that does tell you a lot about Alvarez. Alvarez digs in with those heavy hands. It's a pace and a flow that's working just fine for Canelo Alvarez. On these changes, he lands the bigger punches. Going for the home run right there and missed with the right. Counter shot by Alvarez after the Rose combination. Yeah, if Rose would not commit so much to that straight left hand and just kind of stick it out like a jab for a time or two, it would probably allow him to land it a little bit more. But because he's committing to it every time, Alvarez just waits and counters it. Final seconds in round number three. Like Alvarez there, okay. in control, just like that. It's going well. Relax, please. Just relax. I'm feeling okay. Pay attention when you connect with him with three or four shots. And then you come right back. So you hit, hit, and go down. And step back. So bend a little bit. So hit and bend a little bit. Okay? Little by little. When you throw your backhand, it's a little bit too high, and you're throwing it from too far out. Don't get desperate with it, trying to throw it, right? Once you know you're in range, fire it. It looks moving. Yeah, you're pointing. Right? A todas las personas en la arena, que está prohibido tomar video, incluso dentro de los teléfonos celulares. La persona que sea sorprendida será deslocada de la arena. And round number four underway between Canelo Alvarez and Ryan Rhodes. All the effective punches have been landed by the 20-year-old Canelo Alvarez so far in the fight. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside score. How about it? I agree with you 100%, Bob. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Bob, obviously Ryan Rhodes' game plan in this fight is not to box Canelo Alvarez. It's to fight him. I mean, he's standing there trying to bang punch for punch with Canelo, and it ain't working. Another thing, every time he switches southpaw, Canelo whacks him with right hands. That, that goal in southpaw is not doing him the least bit of good. If you ask me, he ought to stay right-handed. You know, he's not fooling Canelo. Canelo's not having any problem with the southpaw stance. Three to nothing, Canelo Alvarez. Hard to dispute that card, Harold. Rhodes kind of on the defensive, a little bit tentative. Alvarez steps in this with the right hand. Roy, do you think that everything's going nicely right now for Alvarez, but do you think at some point does it your subconscious kick in and where you want to just start picking it up a little bit? Without a doubt it will. It'll, it'll kick in and he'll start doing things a little differently, but right now he's trying to take his time and make sure he feels uh, Rhodes out really good so that he doesn't do anything crazy. This is the best time for a guy to pull up and is when you're at home because a guy expects you to get lackadaisical or you get too overconfident and try to go out and put out too much trying to get him out of there. Right hand. Knocks Rhodes off balance. He dips out of the corner and away from danger. Slick move by Rhodes. Alvarez blocks that left and right with his gloves. Double left hook to the body, right up the cut inside, scores for Alvarez. Beautiful combination by Alvarez. And Rose is down! Six 
sixth time in Rhodes' career he's been down. And not against the quality of Canelo Alvarez. He kicks to the body, does Alvarez. Alvarez coming in with a right hand, a jab, a double jab, followed by another glancing right hand, hit him behind the head. And I think the kid was sort of off balance, but sometimes those shots behind the head do hurt. They see a, a right hand followed by a double jab, then another right hand that kind of caught him on the ear, but it did seem to take his balance because he lost control of that left foot. According to the Copper Box stats through the first four rounds, Alvarez with advantage in power shots 50 to 14. You heard the corner of Ryan Rhodes and Dave Caldwell. His trainers say, hey, don't worry about the points. I mean, he was pretty specific with us when we talked to him. He said, there's no way I'm winning the decision. I'm going to have to stop this guy. So it's almost like, who cares if you're giving away rounds? You're going to have to knock him out anyway at some point. And he got a point there, but the bad part about it is, like I said earlier, to do that, you have to open yourself up. And we'll have to wonder, can he take Canelo's punches as well? What can Rhodes do, Roy, to create some opportunities for himself? Well, it's to gamble, just like we just talked about. He got he has to gamble and try to land the big shots. That's the only chance he has because he's going to get caught whether he gambles or not. So he may as well gamble and try to land his own big shots first and see what happens. What can he do, though, to sort of set up that gamble? Throw those lead punches without so much conviction in, in, in the beginning. He, throw, he committed to every punch. You can't commit to every punch because now Alvarez knows you're coming and he's just going to count it. And if you wait on him, that's what's going to happen. Good stiff jab from Alvarez and then a combination. He's waiting too much, Rhodes is, and he's giving up too many punches right now. <laughs> In some cases, the best defense is offense. <laughs> Love the way Alvarez sets things up with body shots. And that right there, what Rose is doing now, stepping to him. If he's going to fight this type of fight, that's what he may as well do. Just so step to him and make it happen. Okay. Very comfortable going for Canelo Alvarez as he rips another combination, opens up with that left foot, doubles up with the right hand. Nothing coming back from Rhodes. Four combinations from Alvarez. Another thing we have to take into consideration is the fact that Rhodes is 14 years older than Alvarez but he only has 12 more fights. So who truly is the veteran here? Alvarez trying to punish the body of Rose. Chops the right hand from above. I like Rose's game plan, but he's giving up way too many punches early. And the five rounds, all Alvarez. You're doing well. Relax. Relax. 
It's still dangerous. He's slowing down a little bit, but he's still dangerous. So he's got... Listen, if you want to win this world title, what's the fucking do? Right then. Let's start putting some hands on him, right? Okay? You know your little steps back? You're not doing it, right? You're not doing it. Drop back, right? You've been more sound defensively as an orthodox, but fidget it and then fire straight off it, okay? Right? Don't stand there, start letting him do it. You're letting him work you over, right? Come on. Hey? Come on. Well, the corner of Alvarez with some good advice there in the sense that, look, he's still dangerous meaning Rhodes, but he's starting to slow down and a little bit of sort of pleading in Rhodes' corner, Roy, and the fact that you're not using some of the things that you need to use in order to create opportunities like that little step back they talked about. What yeah. do they mean by that? Well, he's giving up too many punches, and when he punches, like I told you earlier, he's committing to the punch so much that he can't step back to, to avoid Alvarez's counter. So if you're going to step back, you can't commit or you can't overcommit to the punch. He's overcommitting to the punches, which leaves him there for Alvarez to count. And he said you're letting him work you over. That means he's giving up too many punches, like I said at the end of the last round. Good hook landed by Rose, though. We're in Guadalajara, Mexico. HBO's boxing after dark. Bob Papa, Roy Jones, Harold Butterman. In Guadalajara, Canelo Alvarez and Ryan Rhodes in round number six for Alvarez's 154-pound belt. Rhodes has been down once, that in round four. And Rhodes just also landed the best right hand that he's landed all night long. <laughs> Try to jump in with that left. Alvarez blocked some of it. Rose has to, has to get on the attack and stay on the attack. He's not. A, he's, he's allowing Canelo to get his confidence back and to rest and stay powerful because he's not consistently attacking him. Canelo can fight at this pace all week long. Hey, Alvarez allowed to set up and then throw one of those big body shots. Yeah, now I did see Rose just throw a left hand without committing to it too much, and you saw he landed the punch without getting counted. Time to hook to the body and then threw a left hand that caught the face of Canelo. Rose has landed his best three punches in this round of the fight period. But that's where he messes up at. He overcommits and allows Canelo to throw three or four counters. by Alvarez has been effective. Rhodes working on that southpaw stance. Stay southpaw. Right there when he stuck that left hand out like a right hand, you saw he landed the flush and he didn't get counted. That's what I mean when I say he shouldn't overcommit. How do you feel, son? Did he hit you up in the head? I'm okay. Relax, kid, relax. I'm fine. Confident. How do you feel him? He's strong, but he's slowing down. Stay orthodox, right? Move fast movements, but keep your left hand up, right? When you're not punching, get out of it, right? On the end of the shot, take yourself away so he can't hit you back. Al Canelo Alvarez is outlanded Ryan Rhodes by 50 punches through the first six rounds. 95 to 45, power shots, Rhodes down in round four. 
Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Howard Letterman. You know, Bob, I think Rose's corner was right when they said don't stand in front of him. Six to nothing, 60 to 53, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Canelo gets an extra point at round four. That's a 10 8 round. Now Ryan Rhodes is cut under his right eye. He's got a bad bruise or he's bleeding a little bit under the right eye. But Canelo Alvarez, then the heart of the shots. Rhodes making a mistake of just standing right there in front of him. Every time he picks those hands up, uh, Canelo whacks him with a left hook or a good straight right hand lead. So Canelo Alvarez doing all the leading, doing all the punches. He's the aggressor. He's winning the fight six to nothing. And by the way, this heck of a food from Panama doing a terrific job as a referee. I like him a lot. All right, Harold. And Alvarez again landing hard combinations to Rhodes. Yeah, all those punches that we talked about Rhodes taking earlier are starting to show up now. That's why you see his face starting to bust up because he took so many shots early and it wasn't landing enough on Alvarez in order to make up for it. That's a push. Hector Hopper, the referee, rules it immediately, even though the crowd rejoices. Interesting thing about Rhodes, knowing coming in that he needs a knockout to win here in Guadalajara. As we're into round number seven, in his career he's got 31 knockouts, but only five have come after the sixth round. Alvarez works the body, goes to the head. And once again, Rhodes is giving up far too many punches here. Alvarez is having his way. He can do this all night long. Hometown fans cheering on Canelo to a rhythmic beat. He's had pretty good rhythm throughout the course of this fight against Ryan Rose. He did not bring a cut man from England. We were told Fernando Garcia will handle the cuts. It's not in a dangerous spot it's below the eye of the cheek. Round number seven, Alvarez in total control. Keep it still, let him work. Listen to me. You're either going to get stopped here, right, and you're going to blow not doing anything. Being right, he's got to lock it all over again, right? This Stay Tuesday night, goals. don't miss the premiere of Real Sports, which takes a look at Saudi Gaddafi, son of Omar Gaddafi, who's surely the worst player to ever grace the roster of a first division Italian soccer club. Then July 23rd, World Championship Boxing returns with a big time showdown in the 140 pound division as fellow titleists Amir Khan and Zab Ju to face off with each other, their title belts on the line. Move your head and fire downstairs. I need you to fire. Fire him in twos and threes, you understand? Listen, you had a good round last round. Let's do it again. Come on. Round number eight begins. Can Ryan Rhodes change the dynamic? Canelo Alvarez in the green in total control. 30 and 0. 26 knockouts. Alvarez has dropped Rhodes in the fourth round. Rhodes has been a bit busier on average according to the copy box numbers. There you go, there you go. Alvarez landing at a stronger clip. Power shots to his advance. Actually, Alvarez is going to get busier. Averaging 45 punches thrown strong around. Okay. Disturbance outside the ring as the action continues in the ring. with a nice combination. Yeah, he puts these four and five punch combinations together really well, ending them most of the time with a good body shot. 
Boy, the other thing he's been doing nicely in this fight is not ignoring the body. Nice combination. Rhodes responds with a shot of his own. He also throws a beautiful uppercut that he's mixing in his combinations. And for some reason, for some reason, Rhodes can't seem to avoid that uppercut. Rhodes blocked that combination from Alvarez. No, no, no. Canelo ducks away and then to the back of Rhodes. Doubles up the left hand as Alvarez. Rose is giving it a game effort, but I just don't think he has enough of his attack to do Alvarez in the game. So now Alvarez is really hurting his body bad. They charge to the body. He slows down Rhodes again. Good thundering left hand to the rib cage. Those body shots are really taking a lot out of Rhodes. for Canelo. Rhodes is not throwing enough punches and just not busy enough right now. Going to copy box in this round, Alvarez has a 23 to 1 edge in power shots. Connected. See, Rhodes throws one punch right there when he needs to throw four or five. Now, I know he's going for a knockout, but that one punch is not going to knock Alvarez out. And of eight, all Canelo here in Guadalajara. Stay concentrated, son. It's going okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Don't lose out of it. You're not going to stop him. I know he did. But you went south, though, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You went south when you got caught with body shot, right? Listen to me. Have a drink. Stay orthodox, right? When you started, when you're throwing that right hand, you're throwing it far apart, and you're not catching him. Right here, you see Alvarez slip the right hand, come up with a right of his own, a left hook to the head, followed by a beautiful left to the body. That right body shot really hurt Rhodes. And he comes right back with a left body shot again, and I think that, that body shot is what's doing the most damage, or what did the most damage in that round. Ryan Rhodes, nicked under the right eye. Canelo Alvarez's face virtually unmarked. Round number nine underway. All Alvarez to this point. Yeah, he landed two beautiful left body shots there that really caused a lot of problems for Rhodes. I think he's just about at that point to where Rhodes is not quite as dangerous as he once was. Rhodes making it pretty easy for Alvarez. He's not pressuring. He's letting Alvarez move around here. He's not really cutting the ring off for him. Well, he's cutting the ring off. He's just that he's not punching. That was a good shot. But he's not throwing enough punches. When he punches, he usually lands a decent shot on Alvarez. But he's not throwing enough punches. And what people don't understand on the outside of the boxing ring is when you're absorbing punches, it takes just as much out of you to absorb a punch as it does to, to throw one. So whether you're delivering punishment or you're taking punishment, it's still the same. So if he's going to be out there, he may as well throw the punches. He's going to be just as tired if he's absorbing them. Alvarez really kind of taking it easy in the first half of the round. Now he opens up a little bit. Well, he looked a little winded that last round himself when he threw his hands on, on Rhodes' head and leaned down after a combination. But he can bounce back. Well, because Rhodes didn't pressure him at all when he was sort of taking the part of the round off. Exactly. So he just takes his time now. Rhodes is not throwing enough punches to really outpoint him, so he's being smart about it. And that's what you really love most about Alvarez. He fights like an older fighter. He fights like a veteran already at the age of 20. 
Well, this is his 234th round as a pro, and he's not even 21 yet. <laughs> And Rose is giving it a gallant effort. He's just not throwing enough punches. Very game effort. Has taken up everything that, Aver that our Alvarez is hitting with, but he's just not throwing enough punches to really pull off an upset. But Roy, isn't something have to do with in those first, you know, two, three rounds? He sort of felt the power of Alvarez, which caused him some concern. I don't think so. Um, I think he's just saving it, trying to make sure he don't wear himself out because he don't want to get caught with those body shots while he's tired. How do you feel, son? I'm good. Don't trust him. Right now you were a little too passive. And he hit you on the side. Everything all right? Three rounds left. We're round with it, we're round with it. Ten. Right, one round ten. Ryan. No more fucking what ifs. Alright, give me time. You can do it. Tie defense with that. We begin round number ten. As we check in with Harold Letter. Okay, Bob, I've got it 90 nothing, 90 to 80, Canelo Alvarez. You know, Brian Rhodes won a round. I didn't see it. He did a little bit better in the sixth round, but that's about as close as he came, and he lost that round. Well, one thing I want to point out, Dave Caldwell, in a blue corner, as Brian Rhodes' his trainer, is sitting on the apron. He has no right being on the apron. It's grounds for disqualification. I mean, if the referee really wanted to get sticky, he could disqualify Rhodes because his cornerman is on the apron. You're not allowed to be on the apron. You have to be on the floor while the round is on. Ninth and I think Canelo Alvarez. All right, Harold. I don't think it really matters much, but <laughs> as Alvarez has given Rhodes a beating, you know, Rhodes said he needed a knockout to win in Alvarez's backyard. If he's going to win this fight, he's going to have to do something he's never done in his career, get a knockout past the ninth round. wants to reset boy is just allowing him to reset take a deep breath and really not putting any pressure ever making Alvarez feel uncomfortable yeah he's letting the power punch to save his power up and you can't beat him like that I mean you're not gonna knock him out like that and you can't just wait on him to throw power punches at you it's gonna cause you the most the most damage in the end or in the long run oh, good good body body shot. shot by Alvarez to the body again, right to the ear. Left hand scores. Rose gets away from more danger. Well, Alvarez doesn't even have to be concerned about defense because Rose is not punching. And his corner told him a couple rounds ago not to go to southpaw because he's not working for him and he's southpaw now. Really, nothing coming from Rhodes. Taps out a couple jabs. That's it. But the bad part about that, not that it won't happen because we never know what's going to happen in the future, but this is why you tell fighters not to go into a fight looking for a knockout. You get caught looking instead of, or st instead of working or throwing the punches, and they never come. The shot never opens up because you're doing more watching than you are punching. He looks like a fighter who's out there looking for a knockout. That's when it's most less likely to happen. And he hasn't done the work to even tire out Alvarez to a point where maybe a punch could have an effect. You know, we saw last round, he hit him with a right hand, and Alvarez just kind of shrugged it off. Relájate primero. 
Uh, relax. Just relax. How do you feel? I'm good. Two more rounds to go. It, this is a safe one. Listen, if you drop your hands and let him go, he'll stop it. Alright? And you know you've not given anything. Chin down, hands up, walk the fuck back. Alright? Just kick him in the start, jump up on your up, and fight. You've got two rounds in you. Alright? Come on, listen. Give it everything you've got. You will knock him out if you land him in twos and threes. And move your head after it. Come on, kid. Now the corner of Ryan Rhodes imploring him to give it his all. In round number 10, Alvarez landed 24 power shots to Rhodes three. Numbers dramatically lopsided in Alvarez's favor as we begin round 11. Alvarez touches Rhodes to the body. Combination to the head, backs up low. Every time Rose turns a southpaw, just about, he gets caught with that big red hand from Alvarez. Yeah, he thought it would be a weapon. It really has not been at all, Roy. The, the ability to switch. I think it's been more of a hindrance tonight than it has been helped. Yeah, and his corner told him earlier in the fight, stay orthodox. Don't switch. It's not working, but he still does. Big right hand over the top as Alvarez ducked away. Well, he's still trying to knock out, though. That was a very good combination he threw, and it had very good conviction on it. So he's still game, and he's still trying for the knockout. He hasn't given it up yet. And I don't think he'll give it up. Rhodes combination and then a looping left from Alvarez. I think Rhodes is just starting a little too late. Plus to this point where when he's hit Alvarez with some clean shots, he just hasn't hurt him at all. No, but at least he landed more. He was landing him when he was throwing him. When he doesn't throw him, he doesn't land him at all. Corner of Rose trying to exhort Ryan on. Tell him to come forward, put some pressure on him. And now Rose is beating under both eyes. End of round 11. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Round 11, I'm going to put your He didn't like it, Ryan. We got three minutes. Right? Rápido, rápido. Listen, you might as well get knocked out in this last round, right? You've lost every round, right? You might as well get knocked out in this last round because it makes no difference. At least tranquilo, fire tranquilo. your shot. Hands up, stay open up. Hands up and let your shots go. Enjoy, enjoy what you're doing here. We're almost there. Are you all right? I'm fine. Right, right. you could do another three rounds of this shit, right? But you're not working. One round, three minutes That's left. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, three minutes left. Do yourself proud. Oh. Chin down and fire Oh, Roy, what do you think about that as we begin the 12th and final round? Uh, and Rhodes Corner said, you might as well get knocked out. I mean, go for it. What are you waiting for? That's what he's basically saying. And that's how you should, should have been talking to him since round six. 
I mean, a loss is a loss, whether he gets knocked out or whether he just gives it up. I mean, he hasn't won a round, and he's about to go down anyway. So why not land something while you're going? Alvarez opens up and lands the good punches. Instead of Rose looking for a knockout, Alvarez is. <laughs> He wants to close the show in his hometown. Rhodes gets rocked. Referee stops it. Se mantiene el invicto campeón mundial super welter CMB. So guys, there we have it, a young Canelo Alvarez producing a complete shutout and well-deserved TKO victory in his first defense of his WBC World Super Welterweight title against Ryan Rhodes from the UK. Took place in Canelo's native country of Mexico and was his first major world title, which he won as a vacant belt against Matthew Hatton in his previous fight in the USA. Now guys, we all know that Canelo has progressed astronomically throughout his career and he is currently making a defense of all four major belts at the super middleweight limit against Jaime Munguia. I believe Canelo gets the victory in this fight, but what happens next? David Benavides has moved up to light heavyweight and seems focused on targeting the winner of Dmitry Bivol and Artur Betabiev. Within that division, he already has a fight scheduled against Alexander Gvozdik, but if there's pressure upon Canelo to open up to the fight with Benavidez, given that they are successful in their next fights, I believe Benavidez will make every effort to come back down to the 168 pound weight limit. The job harder, but from what I've seen, I think he feels he has unfinished business at the super middleweight limit. Other candidates, such as David Morrell Jr., who also has moved up to light heavyweight and looks to fight in August. You also have Bazinian and Pacheco, both undefeated but also relatively unknown. Like always, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Anyway guys, that's all for now. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Please remember to smash the like button if you have enjoyed watching this particular update. Remember to leave a comment within the comment section if you want to add anything about Sal Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. So until my next one, peace out.